I recently did a video where we took the finished image and I actually put it onto a background and gave the impression that the bottom corners were actually curled up. That was in Photoshop. This time round we're going to be doing it in Elements. I've selected this image and this is the background we're going to be placing it on. Now if you haven't got any suitable backgrounds just Google Textures Photoshop. It's amazing what you'll come up with. I've actually got on screen there. That's the uh, website I use for this particular texture. Or the next time you're out with your camera, just be aware of some of the various sort of finishes you've got around you. Take pictures, put them into a separate folder as you never know when they can come in handy. Right, let's come back to our start image here. That's this one. Coming across, we need to pick up the Move Tool. Now, if I just bring my cursor over, you can see it's saying Move Tool in brackets V. In other words, if I use the letter V, pressing the letter V, I have now got the Move Tool. I'm going to click down. As I click down, you'll notice it's changed from the Move Tool to a black arrowhead, and you will also notice some very faint rectangular showing us the image itself. If I come up to my Concrete Bear tab, you'll notice the way the tab changes over. Bring your cursor down a little bit. Now press and hold down shift on the keyboard. Holding down shift, good, because now you can release your mouse. Because you held down shift, the image has gone directly over the center of the image. Got the move tool selected. I need to nudge it up a little bit. I want to keep it in the center, but I want to sort of move it up a bit so we've got a bit more space underneath for our drop shadow. All you need to do is use the arrow keys on the keyboard. So use the up arrow key, so using the up arrow key, you see the way we can nudge it up. Now if you press shift and the up arrow key, you'll notice the way it jumps up even further. Great stuff. That looks pretty good like this. Right, now for our drop shadow. We're going to use layer 1 to actually produce our drop shadow. So bringing my cursor over the thumbnail, I'm going to press command or control. Pressing command or control, you can see the way my cursor changes. Clicking down, we've now got a selection. Now we need to put in a new empty layer, so we're going to bring our cursor up to where it says create new layer. Now if I click on this as it is, it'll just put the new layer directly on top of layer 1. But if you press command or control, so hold down command or control, now bring your cursor up, now click on create a new layer. What it's going to do, it's going to put the new layer underneath layer 1. Right, let's switch off layer 1. Our selection is now on this new empty layer. And all we need to do is fill this selection with black. So we're going to go to Edit. We're going to drop down to Fill Selection. That brings up Fill Layer, Content, Use. And you've got a drop down menu here. Guess which color? Yes, it's going to be black. And I'm going to click OK to that. There it is. Our selection is now filled with black. To get rid of the marching ants, simply go to Select, Deselect. Command D, Control D is the shortcut. Right, we need to give this a bit of a curve. Now to give it a bit of a curve, we can use the marquee tools. You can see rectangular marquee tool, but I'm going to drop down and click on tool options. We're going to change it from rectangular marquee tool to the elliptical marquee tool. Coming across, click on new selection. So make sure you've got the new selection. That's the first little button press there. I'm not feathering. No, is zero pixels. Let's fold this down out of the way going to come into the image, going to click drag it across, something like that there would be pretty good. Now because you've got the new selection, you can bring your cursor down, you then get the rectangle with a flag on the top and you can move this anywhere on the actual selection, it's all on the shadow, that's what I meant to say, right, let's bring it across. And all I'm looking to do is just to bring it into that area there, just looking at the way this is curving, that's pretty good, getting roughly the same distance between the edge of the selection and our shadow as we've got on the other side, just going to nudge it across a little bit, that looks pretty good like that, there. Right, now we've done that, all you need to do is press delete on the keyboard, press in delete, gone, command D, control D, will remove the selection as well. Let's come up, let's switch on layer 1. So layer 1 is now switched on, we're still working on layer 2, our shadow layer. I'm going to press V on the keyboard, that's going to give me the move tool, and I'm going to click down, and I'm just going to move this down, and as I move it down, you can see there is our shadow emerging, and as our shadow emerges, you will notice the way it gives the impression that the image itself, the photograph itself, is now beginning to curl up. But there's a little bit more work to be done on our shadow. So let's just switch off layer 1. Working on layer 2, we're now going to go to Filter. 
we're going to drop down to blur we're going to come across to Gaussian blur now depending on the file size that you're working with this is where you need to make some adjustments just bring your cursor out you've got that little square clicking down you can see there's the edge as I bring this across you'll notice the way the edge begins to feather out it's beginning to blur a little bit for this size image 10 pixels is fine this is going to be for a website if you're doing it for print you may t need to take it to 15 20 pixels somewhere around there but experiment it's that type of look that you're after once you've done this click OK right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up and we're going to click on this this is going to add a layer mask if I just switch our layer one back on the reason for doing this is when you look at a shadow it's going to be slightly heavier here with the shadow then as it curls up it's going to get slightly softer towards the edges and it's this edge here that we're now going to soften off using the layer mask something else we use, need to use with the layer mask is the gradient tool so clicking on the gradient tool dropping down to the tool options now there's a few changes to make here just taking a look starting off we got the radial gradient no we want the linear gradient so make sure you got the linear gradient coming over in the window here you'll notice I got black to white foreground to background in other words the colors down here if I click in I'm gonna come and I'm gonna change it from foreground to background our black to white to our foreground to transparent in other words our black through to transparent now that is important so make sure you click on the second little icon in clicking OK to that something else I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the opacity and I'm going to drop this down to 50% the reason for doing this is I like to do it in two stages and I'll explain why as we're now working through this right it's going to bring my cursor right to the edge of the shadow I'm going to click down and I'm going to press and hold down shift why am I holding down shift? Well, if I release shift, you'll notice my line goes slightly wonky. Hold down shift, it goes perfectly horizontal. So I'm going to bring it into this area here. Releasing it, don't forget, I've got 50% opacity. Through it comes. Going to come back to the edge. Going to drag it in so it's the edge of the uh, drop shadow. Bring it in. Just releasing it, and there it is. A nice soft transition coming through there. That's the reason why I like to do it in two stages using 50% as opposed to using 100% and just taking it away it just adds a little bit more to the effect so don't forget we've got 50% opacity we've got the linear gradient I'm clicking right on the edge of the shadow and I'm gonna press and hold down shift bringing my cursor in you'll notice a nice horizontal line because I'm holding down that shift key that area there looks pretty good releasing it through it comes coming to the edge again bringing it in not quite so far this time into that area bringing it through there it is a nice soft edge if I just switch this on you can see the difference that's now made and you can see how much more it looks as if it's actually lifting up from the bottom corners but there's more again <laughs> right let's just take a look at this let's switch it off and you can see in the center there it is solid now we don't want this we got the opacity set to 100 percent we're going to reduce this down as I start to reduce it down to there 60 what we got 76 percent there you can now see the background coming through I'm just in fact going to switch it on so we can see exactly what's happening I'm going to press V on the keyboard see how useful that shortcut is just drop it down a little bit like this so we can see the way it's looking now coming with the opacity something in that area there brilliant that will do nicely great stuff right now that we've done that how about the image itself well I think I need to change the color of this stroke line so let's come up to our layer one I'm gonna press down command or control you can see the way the cursor is changing again clicking down we've now got our selection back and we're gonna to come to edit we're going to drop down to stroke outline selection so clicking on stroke outline selection now when this opens we got stroke width 15 pixels fine for this size if you're using larger for print you may need to go to 20 25 pixels again experiment drop down to color click on the little thumbnail here is where you can change the color of your stroke outline but I think black will work with this nicely so I'm going to click cancel location no it's not where the picture was taken it's the location of your stroke now with this the location inside in other words the stroke line is going to come inside the selection and click OK through it goes command D control D looking pretty good so far okay so you want to move things around a little bit let's take a look I'm on layer one I'm going to bring my cursor down on top of layer two press down command or control click down they are both now highlighted 
I've still got the move tool, any other tool, press V on the keyboard and we can now move this around. But why not give it a little bit of a twist as well? So if you come up to image, transform, free transform, command T, control T is the shortcut, around goes the transform tool, bring your cursor out and you'll notice the way it changes from an arrowhead to double arrows, if I bring it to the line to a bent arrow, bring your bent arrow to the corner and slightly twirl it round a little bit like that. That looks pretty good and just click in the center, dragging it down a touch or two. That there, brilliant, great stuff. Looking pretty good so far, really pleased with this. Okay, let's just take a look at darkening down our background. Now, all we're gonna do is use Command J, Control J. So using Command J, Control J to duplicate our background layer. Now, if we come to the blend modes, these blend modes between this line here and the bottom line are gonna darken it down. So if we come to something like darken, click on that, not a lot happens. If we go to multiply, Thankfully that worked, it's darkened down nicely. Let's go to color burn, that could be pretty good. Yeah, I like the look of that color burn. Let's go to uh, darker colors. That's brightened it up. So let's click on this one, linear burn. It is very much sort of trial and error. See which one works for your pictures and the tonal range that you're working with. That's the important part. I like what this is doing, it's giving it a rather nice grungy effect. Now coming to the opacity slider, dropping this down slightly into that area there looks pretty good switching on and off that's the before that's the after amazing the change with this look at that drop shadow it gives the impression that the sides are curling up and it is an illusion the edge of the picture is perfectly straight it's that the way that we've done our shadow that's what's given us the effect you can always click on the shadow you can choose to move it across like this so I'm bringing the shadow out over that area there just to give it a little bit more depth to this side just go in with the lighting direction that you've got in your picture you may want to go out the other side but no that there looks pretty good play try experiment see what you come up with that's the fun of doing this pressing tab on the keyboard will remove all the panels there it is. Go on, give it a try. Until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.